good morning from the ranch we're on fire we're on fire here in wildcat station like a mock two with our hair on fire you hear the crow uh so yes i'm at the ranch and the creek fire which is over 200,000 acres is about 20 miles from here but uh the the border the western border of that fire is contained so it's not coming this direction at this point but the smoke sure is hello ran hello maria hello chucks hello corey so yes today we're going to talk about the best investments this is in our series of financial iq and i'll uh, bring you up to date if you're new to this conversation uh, it is a perspective i think worth considering that a great deal of the strife that exists in north america today comes from income inequality or net worth inequality or financial power inequality when you know the top one percent of americans earn one percent of the income and that group of people is growing like crazy and the people in the middle class um you know their income is not growing and the people in the bottom 50 percent their income is not growing and their buying power is getting worse so the haves to put it simply have a lot more they have a lot more abundance they have a lot more security but most importantly they have a lot more power and the have-nots don't and the simplest way to look at how government works a perspective about how government works is one of the things that haves have is K Street so if you're not familiar with K Street it would be worth a Google K Street is uh, the street in, in Washington DC where all of the offices of the lobbyists in America work and they work on K Street so they can walk right across the street into the White House and the West Wing and hang out with all the senators and congressmen. And of course, sit down with them and say, hey, you wanna to come to my hunting lodge? Wanna to go to the Caribbean? <laughs> you wanna get your daughter into college? Um, vote this way. Yeah, so guess what? Money buys, money buys legislation. Simple as that, right? It would be nice if legislation was based on values but it's not pretty much based on money. Now, of course, out here in the public sector, uh, yeah, we have values and we vote our values. Um, and so we vote the person in the office, but then the person in the office that is voting, voting for legislation, well, they, you know, they tend to vote our values because they want to get reelected, but in the meantime, they're doing a lot of voting based on money. So anyway, we got a big, conflict in this country right now we have a lot of strife we have a lot of anger uh, I, I blindly stupidly I guess stupidly uh, posted something was I don't know if it was on my personal page or my business page but something about Ruth Ginsburg last week you know I I don't know why I just lost my mind and I said the caption was a modern-day Mother Teresa you know and I was just thinking about Ruth Ginsburg you know courageous independent woman chartered her own path broke the glass ceiling did things like mother Teresa did but of course i wasn't thinking about their voting record or their values or i wasn't thinking about oh well i guess liberals like ruth ginsburg and conservatives like mother Teresa. i don't know but oh my God, did I get in a poop storm, storm on that Facebook post, which I finally just took down, sadly. Um, anyway, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about financial IQ because I coach a lot of people. One of my favorite things to coach people on is their wealth building, their financial IQ, 
their debt structure, their income structure. Um, and so I'm not a certified anything other than um, I've been broke and I've been well to do and I've learned a lot along the way. And I have some simple common sense things to consider and that's what I've been talking about the last few days. So today we're gonna to talk about the best investments. And uh, I'll give you a chance in the comments to guess, educated guess. Maybe some of you have experience. Of course, this is just an opinion, right? So it's not factual based, but you could drop in the comments, what do you think the best investment is uh, if you're looking to build wealth? What would be the best investment? Like if you had, I don't know, $10,000, what would be the best thing to invest it in? If you had $1,000, if you had $100,000, what would be the best thing to invest it in to build wealth? Anybody know? Anybody venture an opinion? Oh, Janine, just Janine. Yourself? Hmm. Well, you're a smarty pants. <laughs> All right, Janine. I uh, would tend to agree, Janine. Best investment is us. Yeah, think about it. I mean, what is a human being worth? Like, in terms of, we'll just talk about money, as we, this is financial IQ, okay? So we're talking about money. What is a human being worth? This, this thing right here, this one brain, one heart, one body, put it all, wrap it all in skin, the largest organ in the body, right? Hold all that stuff in in skin, whatever's going on in there, that big chemical experiment that hormonal experiment, that miracle experiment inside the sack of skin, what is that body being worth financially? Well, I don't know. One way you could answer that question is, what are some people worth? So some of you know that Kimmy and I live on this little island in Hawaii. It's the largest private island apparently in the world, and I guess the definition of private is one guy owns 97% of the dirt and the buildings. And um, so that's why they call it private. And his name's Larry Ellison, and I'm not promoting Larry Ellison. I don't have an opinion about him. Uh, he founded and built Oracle uh, Software, which if you make a hotel reservation or an airplane reservation or you buy pretty much anything online, you're using Oracle Software. And uh, he's worth on any given day, $60 billion. So there, there that's what one guy's worth. Uh, Warren Buffett, oh, about the same. Bill Gates, about the same. Well, then you have Jeff Bezos. <laughs> he just got divorced and he's still worth like $500 billion or something, right? So what's a human being worth? Oh, you know, all right, let's just, Let's say it's a billion, right? Could we settle on a billion dollars? Now, I'm not saying you have the training or the background or the education or the, even the genetics, um, you know, to achieve a billion dollars. But if we just settle on that for a second, that, you know, human beings could be worth at least a billion dollars. Um, or I don't know, how about a couple of million, right? Right? You could settle on that, a couple million dollars. So now let's let's look at the best investment. Okay, if that's the upside, a few million dollars, then what's the best investment? Well, we are, right? Because if your net worth is nothing right now, if you have no net worth, or your net worth is, you know, two hundred thousand dollars, or if it's five hundred thousand dollars, and you want to get it to two or three or four million, then doesn't it make sense that we're the best investment? Now, you can invest in real estate, right? So if your net worth is $500,000 now and you want to get your net worth to $2 million, if you want to create a million and a half worth of net worth and you have $10,000, can you invest $10,000 in real estate and create a million five? No. Can you invest $100,000 in real estate and create a million five? Well, maybe, but that's going to take you 20 or 30 years. Can you invest a thousand dollars in real estate and make a million five? Nope, not 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 realistically, not practically. I don't even know how you would do that. You know, how about the stock market? Well, yes, you can invest a thousand dollars in the stock market uh, if you invested in some unknown, obscure technology, uh, and you just happen to 
hit a Google, a Facebook, an Amazon, an eBay, um, a Tesla, or a Zoom, right? If you do, you could, right? If you just happen to know which one of those it is, but you see, almost all of us, we have no idea what those companies are. So I say the best investment is us because uh, you can take your income, if your income is $50,000 a year now, you can certainly, as a human being, take your $50,000 income and turn it into $250,000. And out of that $250,000, if you're only spending $100,000, you got $150,000 you can now invest in the stock market or real estate. So think of it like invest in the money-making machine, increase your income, and then take that income and invest it in the stock market and real estate. Does that make sense? That's like, that's the simple model that I coach people on, is use this vehicle here to produce excess income and then invest that excess income in the traditional models. And then of course, always be investing back in the money-making machine so you get your income to 250,000, like it, you know, I think you can probably uh, agree with me that if you make $50,000 a year right now and you got in the right vehicle, it might take you four or five or six, seven years even, but if you got in the right vehicle, you could go from $50,000 a year to $250,000. That's only a five-fold increase in your income. And if you're making $50,000 a year now, you are, you're using like one, one thousandth of your potential. If you're making $50,000 a year now and you want to make 250, not suggesting you do. If you want to make 50, if you make 50 and you all, all you want to make is 50, then this is a moot conversation. But if you make 50 and you want to make 250, it's not that hard. It really isn't. It might, it, it, what you got to do is you got to change you, right? You got, you got to analyze your attitudes about money, your attitudes about your own self-esteem, your own worth, your attitudes about other people. You certainly are going to struggle to make $250,000 a year if you're part of the consensus of America right now where whatever you believe, you're right and everybody else is wrong and stupid. Uh, that pretty much cuts your income potential in half if that's the way you see other people. So there's an attitude you could adopt right there is, uh, yeah, I have my beliefs and my opinions, but they're just beliefs and opinions. It's not like I have a patent on the truth, for gosh sakes. Let's not be that arrogant. And so I have my beliefs and opinions and preferences and other people have theirs and they have a right to theirs. And how about if we, if we don't try to figure out who's right and who's wrong, but we just respect each other's beliefs and preferences and values and ideals. Let's, let's unhitch ourselves from being right and instead be, get along, right? So that's one of the ways you can increase your income fivefold. Just change your attitude about everybody else is wrong, whatever it is, right? Religion, politics, you know, whatever. So you got to also deal with your self-esteem, right? So if you want to go to $250,000 a year, you can't be wandering around in a story that you're not worth it, that nobody listens to you, that you don't matter, that, um, you know, uh, you're just a failure and you're a worthless person and you're just the way you are and you can't change. You can't have those attitudes. You got to change those attitudes, right? You got to change your attitudes about money. So if you have attitudes about money, like, People with money are bad, they're bullies, they're manipulative, it's not fair. You know, people that have a big house on the hill, they, they're greedy and selfish and unhappy. You gotta change all those attitudes about money, right? So those are, think of those about, pro, think of those like programming changes that you wanna do to this computer. Like a great way to look at you and I as money-making machines is, you know, we're computers. And some people are just basically Chromebooks, right? You know, you can buy a Chromebook for, I think, 300 bucks. And what will a Chromebook do? Pretty much so search social media and send emails, maybe. Not much else. Why? Because it doesn't have the hardware. It doesn't have the memory. It doesn't have the programming. It doesn't have the robust power source in it, right? But, you know, you could also get a, a Mac Pro for like $4,000. And what can you do with a Mac Pro? Well, you can actually do more with an iPhone Pro 11 than a supercomputer could do um, 25 years ago. I don't know if you can capture this visual or not, but the first company that I ran in uh, network marketing, 
was like 1982-83, and I presided over go, bringing us from the hand calculating commissions and tracking volume on an Excel spreadsheet to the computer age. And we had a room, I just happen, to, I wanna talk about this because I'm looking at this old refrigerator here on the back patio. Can you see that refrigerator? We had a room in the office that I think had about six of those. Six of those, and those were our computers. And an iPhone today will do more than that thing, right? So how you increase your income is reprogram this thing. So if you don't think you're worth, if you think you're worthless, that's just programming, change the programming, right? So, no, I, What's the best investment? It's us. And all we gotta do is change the programming. Change the programming, the education, you know, part of programming is inspiration. Like if you're gonna do something extraordinary, if you're gonna go from 50,000 to $250,000 a year in income, you know, that's that's like hiking a trail you've never hiked before, right? That's, that's climbing a mountain you've never climbed. That's swimming a channel you've never swam. And so what's the best way to do that, alone? or with a group of people that are also going from 50,000 to 250, or a group of people that are going from 250 to, you know, a million. What's the best way to go on any journey you've never been on before? Go with a group of people that are going the same direction. Invest in your education, your skill set, your distinctions. Invest in your belief system. Invest in your self-esteem. Change the computer. Go from a Pro a Chromebook to a Mac Pro with all the bells and whistles. That's how you do that. Now let's talk about where you get the money to invest. Because this is a place that I, I have some of the most uh, fascinating conversations with people who want to invest in themselves, but they can't afford it. So I want to give you a couple models to just consider and I'll tell you a couple stories and then we'll move on to tomorrow. So consider this. Uh, have you ever looked at a program that maybe cost $500? You know, any program, by, you know, anybody. So some kind of coaching, educational, inspirational, community building program. And let's say it costs $500 to get involved. And what you said to yourself is, well, I don't have $500. I can't afford it. So you, you make 50 grand or you make 80 grand or you make 100 grand and you want to invest in a program, but you can't afford it. And let's say it's cost $500. So what I, what I asked people that, uh, you know, give me that response is I said, hey, uh, what's the last thing you borrowed $500 for? $500 on your credit card, $500 that you borrowed anyway, anyhow, what's the last thing you borrowed for? Make a list of maybe the last five or six things you borrowed $500 for. And maybe it was, you know, you you just crept up, like you put $50 a month on a credit card, you know, because you were spending more than you were making and now you got $500 on the credit card and what you actually spent it on was dining out, right? Or booze or cigarettes or pot or vape or, um, I, I don't know, like cable subscription or whatever, shoes, right? Just make a list of the things that you borrowed $500 for and then ask yourself, how did those things contribute to your journey in wealth building? I don't know how they did or not, but it's a, it's a worthy exercise, right? So let's say you borrowed so it's almost everybody, I'm not saying everybody, but almost everybody can get their hands on $500, even if it's a credit card. So let's say the credit card is charging you 10%. Now, if you got bad credit, if you don't have very much income, your credit card might be 20%. So just double the number. But if you borrowed $500 on a credit card at 10% to invest in a program that's gonna reprogram you for income production, Guess how much you're going to pay the bank, which owns the money, owns the debt, right? You're gonna owe the debt to them. That's good debt, right? We talked about a couple days ago. 
because they own the debt. Not good debt for you because you owe the debt. But all debt is not bad even if you owe it, depending on what you're going to do with the money. So if you borrow $500 on a credit card at 10%, how much does that $500 cost you a month? So the credit card gives me five, five C notes here, or credit on a credit card. I can buy something online for $500. I have $500 I didn't have before. What does it cost me for that opportunity? I'll help you for time's sake. About four bucks a month. You borrow $500 at 10% interest, it's $50 a year in interest. It's nothing, right? Now, for the bank, well, the bank likes that because the bank is using somebody else's $500 and they're giving them $5 a year to use their $500 to lend it to you to make 50. So the transaction works, right? Especially when you're doing with the billions and billions of dollars. But just think about it from you. You get access to $500 for four bucks a month. And if you're paying 20%, eight bucks a month. So now you gotta ask yourself, what would you do with $500 to turn the $500 into more than $8 a month? If you could make $9 a month with the $500, you're a dollar ahead. So one of the ways you get wealthy, folks, is just do the same thing that wealthy people and wealthy institutions do, right? So the bank borrows your $500 from you, pays you 1%, $5 a year, and then converts that $500 into an opportunity that pays the bank $50 a year. This is all at 10%. So now you could play the same game. You borrow the $500 from the bank at 10%. You're paying four bucks a month. Now, what could you do with the $500 to convert it to more than $400 or $4 a month? Well, I'll just let you figure that question out, right? What kind of opportunity could you find? What kind of education could you get involved in? What kind of community get, could you get involved in for $500? And maybe it's a one-time $500 and maybe it's you know $40 a month subscription. I don't know. But if you start looking and thinking that way, so let's say you find something that costs $5,000. What does $5,000 cost? about $40 a month. Think about that. What could you do with $5,000 as a business investment? Well, I'm not going to answer that for you. I'm just going to ask the question because standing in the question is how you get the right answer. The way you get the right answer for you is ask the right question. So let just stand in that question. What could you create in income production? in personal development, in transforming and reprogramming programming this computer with $5,000 a month. You can have access to $5,000 for $40 a month. Now I ask you, could the new you, the new programmed with $5,000, could the new you make more than $40 a month, the new you? If you say no, well boy, do you need the $5,000 a month worth of programming. Even if you say, I don't know, you need it, right? $50,000. What could you do with $50,000? If you borrowed it at 10%, you'd only have to make more than $400 a month with it. Think about that. So here's another way to look at it, which is interesting. So people say, I don't have any money. I don't want to borrow any money. They say, I don't want to borrow any money. I'm philosophically against borrowing. All right, that's like, you know, arguing or something about almost political or religious, right? Not even, not even worth arguing about that. Great. Do you have any investments? Oh, yeah, I got money, savings. I got this. I got that. Uh, okay, great. What are you getting on those investments? Let's say somebody's getting 10%. Right? If they're getting 10%, they're knocking it out of the park, really. If they're getting long-term 10%, most people are getting 1%, 1.5% in a savings account, 
in a, in a really conservative stock account, they might be getting four or five or six percent, IRA kind of stuff, five, six percent. Let's just say you're getting 10 percent. Okay, let's just say you're getting 10 percent. Well, what I propose you do if you want to quadruple your income is pull $500 out of your investment account. Because at 10 percent, how much is that $500 earning you? Can you figure this math? You got $500 in an account that's earning you 10% a year. How much money is that $500 earning you? $4 a month. You got $5,000 in a savings account. What's it earning you? At 10%, it's earning you $40 a month. 5%, it's earning you $20 a month. So I'm all for investing. I'm all for piling up cash. I'm all for an emergency fund. I'm all for all of that, right? But how do you get the money to invest? Well, you can plot along for your whole life making 60, 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollars a year and have barely enough to invest. You know, if you got $500 a month to invest, you're gonna have to write, you're gonna to have to let it compound for 30 years. 500 bucks a month for 30 years uh, at 10% is $2 million. What? You're not gonna be homeless with $2 million. But if that's all you got to invest is $500 a month, you're not making enough money to, to, to get wealthy. I'm just, this is all in the context of maximizing our income potential, right? And remember yesterday's conversation, I'm not all about making seven figures or, right? You, you figure out what you want to do. Maybe you want the 40 acres in the tiny cabin, right? And you're all in for a quarter of a million dollars. Well, you don't probably even grand a year. Figure out what it is you want. And then don't let, don't, don't be victim of the excuse. You can't, you don't, you don't make enough money to invest. You don't, you don't have money. Because you might need to invest to make more money. You might need to invest in your programming. You might need to upgrade the hardware. You might need to do all that stuff to increase your income. But you got $5,000 somewhere in some investment that's making you 10%. It's $500 a year, it's $40 a month. So you either have the employee attitude or you have the entrepreneur attitude. So the employee attitude, they kind of, you know, work, get my money, max out my RRA, make sure the company matches my 401 con contribution, 401 contribution, because, you know, that, you have to do that. You got to take care of me. That's only fair that the company matches it. And uh, I got my savings account and all that kind of stuff. And I just go along for 30 or 40 years and I would never, ever, ever, ever think about taking any of that money out because that's how you get financially independent is save, 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 right? Or you got the entrepreneurial attitude, which is, okay, I'm saving $500 a month now. It's going to take me 30 or 35 years before I can live the good life. I want to live the good life in, you know, seven years from now. So instead of saving $500 a month to make $4 a month in interest, I'm gonna not save that $500 a month and I'm gonna invest it in programming. I'm gonna upgrade the opportunity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay high level programmers to reprogram me. I'm gonna pay to join a community that are all gonna hike the mountain instead of me going alone and getting lost and freezing to death and running out of food and getting scared and paralyzed and curled up in a ball like in the fetal position, right? Till the bears get me. I'm going to like surround myself with a movement that's going where I want to go. And I'm going to keep tweaking me and tweaking me and tweaking me. I'm not, not going to give the bank. You think about, you're going to like, you know, even the IRA or wherever you're putting that $500 a month, you're giving it to somebody who has the entrepreneurial attitude. They're converting your $500 a month into $5,000 a month. You want to get wealthy, you got to do the same thing. You gotta play offense until you have enough of a stake to then play defense. And how much of a stake? Depends on what you want, right? 
If you got your 40 acres in your mini cabin, if you got it, then do you gamble and then do you invest and then do you do the whole ambition thing? No, switch to defense, right? Protect everything you have. Don't make any mistakes. You don't need more. You just wanna make sure you don't end up with less. But until you get where you wanna go, you gotta play offense. You gotta have, you gotta have the entrepreneurial attitude. You gotta look at where do you have assets? You know, crazy thing I've done with so many people who needed $500 to do something is, you know, I've just done a virtual tour of their house. Okay, you got this refrigerator out here. What's this for? Well, on 4th of July, we like to use it for beer and soda for the parties we have. So 364 days a year, that refrigerator just sits there and sucks up power. What's it worth? I don't know, $75, sell it. We're one fifth of the way there, right? Hey, give up 4th of July beer, buy an ice chest, borrow an ice chest, right? What else you got around here? Oh, we got this spa here, right? I got this spa right here. How often do you use that? I don't know, where is it? Oh, there it is, there's the spa. How often do you use that? Oh, we use that, you know, once a month. We like to get the spa once a month, okay? The rest of the time it's sucking 40 or $50 a month worth of power. And you can probably get a thousand bucks for that and somebody will come and get it dump it let's go through the garage <laughs> i could take i could take give you on a tour of the garage what i don't even know what's in here but we're gonna find out what's in the garage whoops <laughs> don't, don't take my harley <laughs> uh oh i could sell kimmy's surfboard what is a surfboard doing here at the ranch? I don't know, but if I was doing a tour of your house looking for $500, that would be one of the first things we'd sell because we're in Raymond, California, not Hawaii. Uh, there's a grinder. See that grinder there? You know how long that grinder's been here? 15 years. You know how many times I've used it? None. <laughs> Never. Oh, uh, what else we got? Oh, this is my first pair of snow skis right here. This is this will date you. Look at that right there. 195 head standards. I could probably sell those on eBay for $25 to a collector. And what are they doing here? Oh, look at here's a spare Harley seat I haven't used in years. I only got like uh I don't know, eight pair of golf shoes. Whoop, don't even go out there. <laughs> You get the point? So if you really need 500 bucks or even $5,000, I'll bet most of you have got it somewhere in assets that are not producing any income and they might be even sucking some income and they're certainly sucking some of your space and peace because they're cluttering up your life and you don't need them and you can into reprogramming for income production couple of stories then I'll let you go I know it's a long one uh, so in 1977 uh, a very good friend of mine high school buddy introduced me to network marketing and network marketing was different in 1977 than it is now uh, now you could get involved in just about anything for 500 bucks but back then uh, it was ten thousand dollars and I made about $12,000 a year. So I just want you to think about this in terms of perspective, okay? And folks, I, I was never an entrepreneur. I had the employee mentality. I didn't have the entrepreneurial mentality. I, I didn't never owned a business. I didn't know business. I just had a job at the chicken plant and I loved the job and I plan on being there the rest of my life. Till Foster Farms changed the policy and couldn't advance anymore without a four-year college degree. So I got introduced to the entrepreneurial culture. It was network marketing, but you know, there's lots of different entrepreneurial journeys. I got introduced to network marketing, but the company I got introduced to, basically, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to like do it right, they said, you had to invest $10,000. And that was all in product, but it's $10,000. <laughs> to finish the story, I got to go get some. I'll be right back.
What's ten thousand dollars worth of this? Ten thousand dollars worth of this. Now these are new bottles because I buy it for everything I run that's gasoline. Boats, ATVs, cars, everything. Uh, and I've been using that product for 44 years. It's no longer network marketing, but that's what I invested $10,000 in is that product. I think mean, it's kind of ironic that, I mean, it's very exceptional that a customer would still be using a product 44 years later. But if you want residual income, folks, in network marketing, you got to sell a product that somebody's going to buy 44 years later. People don't think about that. But anyway, back to the point of the story. I invested $10,000, which was almost my annual income. So you think about what your annual income is. You make $80,000 a year. Um, would you be willing to invest $80,000 in your next venture? I took a third mortgage out on my house. third mortgage on my house, which the only person who would give me a third mortgage on my house was my dad. My mom gave it to me, but then she canceled payment on the check, which is kind of like my mom. And so coming from a divorced family, I just went to my dad and said, you wouldn't believe what mom just did. She loaned me $10,000 and then she canceled payment on the check the next day. So of course he loaned me $10,000. And that's how I got in the network marketing business. And what has that $10,000 been worth? Millions. And you know, at some point, somebody about 15 years ago asked me, how much money have you spent, Richard, in transformational development of you? Personal development. I don't mean reading books or going to network marketing seminars. I mean actually investing in transformational development of you, rewiring the brain and the heart and the, the uh, the emotional and hormonal systems, like rewiring this whole mess to create joy and power and peace and, and abundance. And somebody asked me this about 15 years ago, and it took me a while to add it up, it took me a couple of weeks to add it up, but I'd invested a quarter of a million dollars, which would be like, you know, that'd be like a Harvard PhD kind of education. I invested that in me. Now I invested it out of the cash flow that started from the $10,000. And you know, the first thing I bought was in 1982, I bought a, an $11,000 briefcase full of videotapes. That was like my first big transformational development. I was making $40,000 a month, but still after I spent half of my net on my first real personal development venture, like to rewire me. And then a couple of months later, I bought another set for another thousand, $11,000. So honey, folks, I'm not suggesting you would want the same journey that I've been on. You, you know, whole other subject is what do you want? But whatever you want, this being here, it has the ability to produce what you and I want. And if you're not producing it now, if you don't have the right attitudes, if you don't have the right beliefs, if you don't have the right skills, learn them. Just learn them. And go find somebody that has them to teach them to you. Go find a community that's also learning and join that community. And you will, you will develop. You'll be worth more. And here's what I say. Investing in you and I, investing $500 in you and I is worth way more than $4 a month. If there's one thing you get out of this whole conversation, just think about it. You put $500 a month and you give it to some wealth building machine, some entity, some person, some vehicle. You give them your $500, they're making thousands with it, and they're giving you four bucks a month. Give that $500 to you. Give that $5,000 to you. Invest it in you. So you're making thousands or tens of thousands with it. And as you create a surplus, then invest it in real estate and the equities. It's the trifecta of personal wealth building. Invest first in us such that we create a surplus. $500 a month, a thousand a month, 1500 a month, 2000, $2,500 a month surplus and then spend that surplus into the traditional investments. 
And that's today's financial IQ. Checking to see if there's any questions I need to answer. From Bliss Ranch, Wildcat Station, Raymond, California. I'll see you tomorrow.